Let me share with you how I created my wet and needle felted pasanki eggs. First, I started with a plastic Easter egg and I began pulling tufts of roving. I decided to go with three different colors of roving as I was going to wrap my egg three different times. I like using different colors because it helps me to be able to see how many times I've actually wrapped the egg. When I wrap something with roving, I have my fibers all going in one direction for the first layer, in this case vertically. And then when I switch to another color, I have the fibers cross in the opposite direction. Like I said, using different colors helps me keep track of how many layers of roving I have done. When I was finished, I was left with a really fluffy egg and I decided to use wool yarn to tie all the fibers in place. If you're going to use yarn to help secure what you're felting, it needs to be wool yarn and it will felt just like the fibers as you're working. You don't have to wrap it in yarn in order to felt it, however. When I was done, I started to put it in the water and just let it soak for the first five minutes. Putting it in the water, squeezing the excess water out, starting to add a little bit of soap, and that's just the first five minutes. For the next five to 10 minutes, that begins the felting. And to do that, you're going to need to rub your hands together and squeeze a little bit harder as you go. This is how you will go about felting your egg. It's the heat from your hands, the agitation, and the water that causes it to felt. When I was finished, I let them dry overnight, and then I used a razor blade to slice open the egg to remove the plastic egg. This didn't have to happen, but because I wanted to needle felt on the egg, I needed to get the plastic egg out of there. If I were going to try to needle felt with the plastic egg inside, I would end up with a bunch of broken needles. So from there, you can see that cushion off to the right-hand side. I cut it with scissors and got a piece that was just the right size for me to place inside the egg. And then I started needle felting. Sometimes when I'm needle felting, I like to use a little bit of water. It helps me to shape things like circles and those ovals that I was using for the flowers. It just makes things a little bit easier. So that's why you see me sometimes using water when I'm needle felting. This process didn't take too long because the egg's small, but the beauty of it is, is that you can add as many details as you like. With needle felting, there's no rules, but remember, when you are needle felting, one way to know whether or not you've needle felted it completely is it should be completely smooth across the surface. You shouldn't be able to pick or pull any parts of what you felted out. And here I am just kind of going bananas with my pattern, adding more to it as I go, using those other eggs as my inspiration. When I was finished, I did take, actually I left the cushion inside I needle felted the two openings closed in the back. I covered it with blue roving and needle felted over that. Meaning that when you flip my egg over to the back, it's still completely covered and the cushion is inside. You could have, or I could have left it open and maybe kept it as a place to keep things, but I really just wanted my egg to keep its form and shape and that's why I left the cushion inside and went ahead and needle felted it closed. So there you have it. That's how I went about making my pasanki eggs. Have fun, you guys.